All Saints Day began around 313 AD and was originally celebrated the first Sunday after Pentecost, meaning that it was originally celebrated in May. It was set up as a feast to honor all the saints that had uh, passed on from the earth. Later on, around 606 AD, the All Saints Day was moved to May 13th specifically, and this just so happened to coincide with a Roman celebration of the dead. Not too long after that, uh, the church in the uh, Celtic areas of the world, you know, Ireland, Great Britain, you know, all that area right up there, they started uh, coinciding All Saints Day with Samhain. Samhain started on November 1st and ran to November 2nd. It was a two-day festival. So suddenly the church took All Saints Day, moved it to November 1st, they added All Souls Day, which was on a different day also, moved it to November 2nd. And since the celebrations for Samhain started on October 31st, they made October 31st All Hallowed's Eve. So in other words, they completely occupied the entire Samhain event and uh, turned it into Halloween, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. Now, one of the things about it is guising was one of the things that they did during... Uh, all Saints Day, All Souls Day, All Hallowed's Eve. Uh, today we only do it on Halloween, but guising is basically disguising. And this is what we call our Halloween costumes today. But the whole purpose of guising was to blend in with the spirits of the dead. So again, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, All Hallowed's Eve is about the dead. So you go around dressing up as spirits so that you can blend in with the spirits from the other world. The concept of souling is one of the origins for trick-or-treating so you go out there and uh you would go door to door and usually the poor would go to the rich the rich would give them what's called a soul cake and then in exchange for the soul cake the receiver of it would then pay alms or pray for the dead and sometimes it'd be buy indulgences in the hopes of getting a dead family member that was in hell and buying them a ticket to heaven which as we all know that is completely unbiblical but anyhow these all eventually became what we call uh, Halloween today. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, you may not want to know that this is part of the history, but this is part of the history there. You can go look it up. It's not that hard to find. Uh, now, let's just add in a little interesting side note there. Let's talk about the jack-o'-lantern. So, the jack-o'-lantern, one of the stories behind it is a story of a guy named Stingy Jack. In essence, Stingy Jack is a bad guy. He's a thief. He's... He doesn't like to give out money. He's wealthy because he doesn't give up any of, his, uh, any of his wealth. Anyhow, he tricks the devil. The devil uh, complies with his wishes, but one of the deals is that he'll never take his soul to hell. Anyhow, uh, when Stingy Jack does die, he can't go to heaven because, well, he's not worthy of heaven. The devil won't take him to hell because of the deal he made with him, so he's forced to wander the earth for all eternity. And uh, the devil gives him a burning coal to light his way because, you know, I guess he can't see in any other fashion. So he has a burning coal. So that became the jack-o'-lantern or the idea behind the jack-o'-lantern. Uh, anyhow, um, it started out as carving of turnips and other fruits and, or probably fruits, other vegetables. Eventually it settled on the, the pumpkin as we get closer to the modern age. And the reason why you have the jack-o'-lantern is a ward of protection against the wandering spirit of Stingy Jack. But yeah, these are some of your Halloween traditions and their origins to it. We could talk about other traditions like bobbing for apples, but, you know, they, they don't have the nice friendly origins that some people like to think that they do. So do your research, go out there, learn some things, and uh, see what these uh, traditions are actually all about and what they're actually rooted in.